what's good we're back in this thing today we're going to be going over the babyface ray free the ghetto music video breaking it down it was edited by wilco visuals and shot by shooter jimmy we've broken down wilco's effects on the channel before really like his stuff he ended up using my texture pack in here and this video got over it's close to 1.1 million views now so that's pretty crazy that many people have seen my texture pack in a video uh even if they don't know it's mine i think it's pretty cool so uh, i just wanted to kind of break down some effects he did because there's definitely some paper effects that he did in the video that uh, I haven't done tutorials on in my channel. You'll probably be able to figure it out, but uh, we'll just go through a few of those. And we're also going to break down some other effects that he does in the video. And there's a few that he does that I already have tutorials on, so I'll refer you guys to there. Before we get into the video, if you haven't already, go ahead and like and comment. It really does help out the channel a lot. And if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and do so because I upload tutorials on music videos similar to this. One last thing before we get into the video, the best way to support the channel is going over to briandelmodic.com checking out my texture pack it's used in this video and i think it can really level up your music videos i'll include the link to that below and also a playlist with all the effects you can do with it that i have tutorials on so far but yeah that's enough talking let's get into the video and uh first we're just gonna watch the video and kind of just break down each effect if it's like a simple one i'll just tell you guys and not do a tutorial on it shooter jimmy wilco visuals so first off uh like wilco's edits but we are stopping the use of Ecto in 2021. Uh, hashtag stop Ecto 2021. This shit is trash. It's a bad effect. D tier effect, F tier effect, whatever you want to say. It's not good. It's overused. Don't use it in your videos. Uh, so first off, we have some VHS overlay. Uh, you can do something similar with universe VHS and just some overlays here. Uh, that's like chromatic aberrations. I just did a tutorial on this effect in After Effects right here. Uh, we can do something similar in Premiere. I'll show you how to do that today. And I'm gonna have a timestamp for like all these effects. Just kind of look for the, I'm not exactly sure what order I'm gonna go in when I go ahead and break them down. So just look for the name in the uh, little timestamp area. I just did a tutorial on this effect actually as well, where the subject pops up and slides out. So I'll have the name of that tutorial pop up and like a card above if you wanna learn how to do that effect. We'll be going over this one. I like this effect a lot. It's pretty easy to. What he did here is he just had the window masked out and like zoomed or scaled in and then zoomed back to the normal uh, size of it. I'll show you guys how to do that as well today. Another use of my paper here. Uh, I have a tutorial on this one. I'll have the card pop up as well. Uh, I just had it so it's split in half, but you can just obviously add one more step to it. So I'll have that tutorial pop up. A lot more of those mask transitions. So we're definitely going to do one of those paper overlays again. I have a tutorial on a uh, effect very similar to this. I'll have the card pop up as well. You just had it stack and then unstack. So you could probably figure out how to do that. We'll be going over this one. I think this is a pretty cool effect that I haven't really uh, done a tutorial on. It is pretty simple, but yeah, we could do that. That one was similar as well. I don't think we're gonna have time to go over this one, but uh, it's pretty simple. All you do is mask out your subject's face and then put something like Sapphire Shake on it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then motion track it to his head. Or you can just each frame but yeah, pretty simple. We'll be going over this one too. This is a pretty similar effect to the other one that I said we we're going to be going over, but I like how he drew on that, so we'll do that. And for that VHS, I'll be showing you guys how to get this VHS effect, a similar one, without an actual uh, paying for a plugin. I have a preset from like a long time ago that I kind of forgot I had, honestly, that has a pretty cool VHS look. I think uh, it looks pretty realistic. It doesn't have the numbers and all that stuff, but it uh, looks pretty clean. So I'll show you that once we get in Premiere. All right, so the first effect we're gonna go over is this. These two right here, they kind of go hand in hand. The mask through here and then the like tunnel effect. Like I said, I have a more in-depth version of this effect on After Effects where it has like a little cooler of a look. But uh, if you want something simple, we can definitely do something like that. So first off, what I'm going to do is just go to the frame where you want it to transition. So I'm just gonna cut out all of this part so we can make our own transition and his doesn't show up. So go in here and just holding alt, dragging up, adding a frame hold, delete that first half, and then it's gonna look like that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the clip where his transition is. I think his is like five, 10, 15, yeah, like 15 frames. So that's probably how long I'm gonna do mine for. And then I'm gonna cut it right at that last frame. So the frozen frame is 15 frames long now. I'd recommend if you want a really good mask to export this as a JPEG or PNG, and then go into Photoshop and use the pen tool to mask around. But you can also just use the crop tool. That's what I'm gonna do for the tutorial. It's not gonna look as good as it can. Go to the crop tool and then start masking out the area that you want. So for our case, we are just gonna mask out anywhere that is not inside the car. Then if you wanna see what your mask looks like, you can go ahead and toggle the first video track off. It's a, this little eye button. I think my camera will probably be over it right now. You can see right here, it's these. 
You can turn that off, go to the crop tool, drag it to 100, make sure you're scaled in, and then you can see what that looks like. Like I said, it's not perfect. I'm just gonna drag the mass expansion up just a little bit, and maybe we can turn off the feather actually. And then what you're gonna wanna do to make this effect simple, just go to the transform effect, type in transform in the effect tab, and drag it onto your frozen frame. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go to the shutter angle first off, make it something like 180. What that's gonna do is when it moves, it's gonna have the shutter angle, so it's gonna have like built-in motion blur, that way you don't have to do any Thing. So what we can do is we can keyframe all these to the default spot, drag it to the last frame, and then scale up your clip and maybe move it to whatever you want and just scale it past. You can even rotate it a little bit. So it does help if you turn back on your video layer so you can kind of see where you're at. And sometimes it's a little hard to drag because it starts lagging a bit. So I just manually input higher numbers until it goes all the way past and then just kind of go down until you see it again and then tweak it. It's like 510. So for me, I'm just going to go 520. And then we can render this in and out just to see what that looks like. And just like that, it's a pretty clean effect. Looks really good. And then for this one, it's pretty much the exact same effect that he just did, but just duplicating the layer. I'll show you how to do that real quick. So basically, you want to find clip where you want it to transition. Go ahead and duplicate it and go and add a frame hold. And then it's going to look like that. And again, using the crop tool, or I'd recommend using the pen tool in After Effects, but you could save a lot of time doing it this way. And I think it looks pretty close. So just depending on how good you want it to look. I'm just going a little bit below the dashboard, only because there's like a reflection and it kind of looks weird if you include the reflection in the crop. And then again, just turning off the feather, dragging left all the way. And I'm gonna turn off that layer, the bottom layer real quick, just to see what it looks like. We can maybe do a little bit mass expansion, just a tad, and then we can turn back on that layer. And then go ahead and add the transform effect. Again, making sure you change the shutter angle to 180. Then what I'm going to do is just keyframe the position, scale, and rotation, and go all the way to the end for the rotation. Drag it to something that you think looks cool. Something like four looks good to me. Obviously, there's this part. I'll, once we duplicate the layers and stuff, it will fix that. And then drag it all the way to the end for this. Duplicate your layer. And if you keyframe the rotation before, it will have the rotation already built in. So then I'm just gonna go seven frames back. So then I'm just gonna make sure you have your scale and position keyframed. And then I'm just gonna go seven frames to the right. So five, six, seven. And then again, scaling all the way in. I think something like 520 worked last time. So we'll try that out. And then I'm just gonna snip that for seven frames. And then what you wanna do is once you snip it to seven frames, go two or three frames, depending on what you want. Duplicate the layer and then move it back to that three frames. One, two, three, duplicate, bring it back. One, two, three, duplicate, bring it back. And what I like doing is once it gets towards the end of this one right here, if that makes sense, go ahead and copy and paste the keyframes that you did. Seven frames from the last frame here. So go to the last frame in the original cutout that's just holding, go seven frames back and then paste it. And then if it does look a little weird like this at the end, what you can do to fix that is you can see, go three frames from the last or three or two, whatever you're doing in between from the last one and see where that keyframe starts. And since it starts two frames away from that, what you just need to do is just add two frames to the final clip and then drag these keyframes back to there. So that way the effect starts on the last one, three frames after that. And that's gonna fix the little bit of inconsistency in all the clips starting. Like I said, I already have a tutorial on this effect here. I'm just gonna be showing you real quick my VHS overlay preset. So I'll have the video link to like how to get this in the description or I'll have a card pop up right now. But basically you just drag and drop it on and you already get this VHS look. It has this thing at the bottom. If you don't want that on, you can just toggle off VR digital glitch. And also if you don't want the black bars, you can just turn that on and off. So I'll go ahead and render that out so you can see what that looks like. This is a pretty cool VHS effect that's uh, really simple. It's free, like I said, and I'll have a link to that in the description and a card pop up just so the people that don't have like Universe or any of the plugins and stuff can still get that VHS look effect pretty easily. And then lastly, I'm just going to be going over this effect. I think I said I was going to do a few more, but uh, just for time or whatever, I'm just going to do this one. It's pretty similar to all the other paper effects. And like I said, I have, I think, 10 other tutorials on effects that you can do with my texture pack on my website. If you do want to break down on a specific paper effect that was done in this video, just comment the timestamp below of the actual video. Just let me know. Uh, but I think this one kind of captures most of them in one, and it's just pretty simple. So I'm just going to go ahead and find a frame. This one right here, screenshot it, and then open up Photoshop, and then go ahead and drag that clip in and then I'm just going to the paper rips and folds part of my pack and I think I'm just going to drag in five 
of them. I don't know how many he did, but I'm just gonna do five because it seems pretty easy. So we can drag those all in at the same time. I went ahead and did six on accident, but that's fine, we can do that. And then I just highlighted them all so I can move them all at the same time. So they're relatively the same size and that way it makes it easier for us to work and have them look good. And then we can go ahead and turn them all to screen and then just turn each one off at a time. You can do any blending mode you want. I use screen, but I think anyone in this column looks pretty good. Light and screen, color dodge, linear dodge, add, and letter color all look pretty good. So what I, all I did is went ahead and moved them all here, turned off every layer, turned it to screen. And then if you wanna do that drawing that he did, I'm just gonna use a brush from the real oils. I think I'm just gonna do something like, I'll have the link to this pack, uh, below. It's free for all Adobe uh, account owners, I think. So if you pay for Adobe, but yeah, I just click on one of those brushes and then I'm just going to draw right onto the actual layer itself of the paper overlay. It's probably not the best way to do it, but I'm just going to do it. I turned off this so it doesn't sample and then just do whatever you want. Go ahead and draw and then you can file save that as you can save it as whatever because it doesn't have a transparent background because you're just going right onto the clip itself i just like to always just make a folder when you do something like this and just put them in order like number one we'll go to number two here and all i'm doing is just roughly the same thing every single time if you want you can turn on and off the layer to kind of match more but i think it has a cool effect if you don't really do that as long as you kind of know what you're doing before and then we can go ahead and save this as two this is definitely a way quicker effect that you can do with the pack. Uh, I know a lot of them take a decent amount of time. So this one's a cool one to do. Uh, shout out Wilco for coming up with something like this and uh, save yourself some time because you could sprinkle this throughout the video pretty easily and not really have it take up much time. Like this whole effect is probably going to take me like five minutes in total from exporting to being totally done. Four, five, and the final one here, six, and then go back into Premiere and you can just drag in everything from that folder. And I forgot actually he used the uh, tape from my tape pack. So I'll go ahead and toss that on real quick. Just toss on, uh, I think he used one piece of tape the whole time. So I'll just do the same, save a little bit of time. And it should auto update if you made a mistake or whatever and saved it as the same file name. So that's pretty nice with Adobe here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and make all these two frames long and then go ahead and nest that sequence. And then what I'm gonna do is just keyframe the first frame and zoom in a bit. I'm gonna go in five on the scale every single time. And I'm just gonna have it slowly zoom into this picture it's not exactly what he did, but that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna keyframe the same keyframe as I did here because it's the same like still, and then keyframe in 110 once it changes. Then again, just zoom it in here, keyframe in, go in 115, setting the same keyframe, scaling into whatever I think looks good, keyframing because it's the same frame, going in 125, same keyframe, 130. And just like that, it zooms in. I think what he had it do is just zoom in and then reset each frame. I kind of like what I did here. Obviously, you, can, you guys can do whatever you want, uh, but this kind of just has like that picture taking effect. Just kind of trying to show you the basics and then you guys can animate however you guys want. If you guys made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Like I said, if you want more tutorials on this video, uh, paper effect that I didn't do, uh, effect that you saw in here that I didn't cover, definitely let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, like and comment. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so. Like I said, the best way to support the channel is going over to briandelmata.com and checking out the texture pack. There's a free pack if you wanted to follow along and didn't feel like buying the full pack. Uh, the full pack has over 210 assets in total and they're 4K if you get that option. But yeah, definitely not necessary. Uh, just watching the video is plenty enough support. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.